Hi guys, Steve Brownjoy here. So we had a request from Mr. Apple to uh, explain how you rack one of the new CR2 IBM HM suits. Thought it was a bit of an odd request until I looked at the racking. Um, and racks uh, rails are usually really obvious to use, but occasionally there are some that are not so intuitive. And Mr. Apple, you were spot on with this. So there are two types of, of rails that we're going to discuss today. It's a fixed length rail and a variable length rail. Up here, we can see our HMC. It's in the rack at the moment. Don't worry, we're going to take it out and show you the rails. Okay? And we're going to show you the fixed length. If you can zoom in here for a second, we're just going to show the difference. The fixed length that we're talking about is between this front post here and the rear post of the rack. I'm using an open rack so you can see it from the sides. Normally they'll be enclosed. We'll cover that in a moment. But this length right, is what we're talking about. Now in an IBM rack over here, these things are bomb proof. They have the round holes and the length between this rail at the front and the post at the back. That's always fixed. It's always the same length in every IBM rack. Right? So in that circumstance, you can order your fixed length. If you don't have an IBM rack or you're not sure, you should use the variable length rails. So you get in there. This nut here, this nut here, allow the rails to be extended or contracted to fit in to any length of standard rack. All right. Uh, normally rails have got all sorts of bearings on and the like, um, but with the thing with the CR2 is it was designed once it's in the rack, everything can be serviced from the front or the back, which is why these rails are a bit more clunky. It's not designed like a standard server to roll in and out easily to a service position. So instead, once you're taking it out, you'll see that it really is like a oh, heavy process. And this will show us the first of the two parts of the rails. So the rails themselves, whether it's fixed or variable, this bit's the same, you get one part of the rail assembly that bolts onto the side of the HMC, one each side, so it clips on at these points, and then there's two small grub screws to locate them in. So literally, it clips on there, slides in, locks into place. So there's one of those on each side. Great. The next part, you can come in a bit closer, Matt, is that you get your rails in place. If so, if it's a variable length one, then you have to screw these two parts of the rail together, set them the right length, put them into the rack. That bit's quite standard. If you're using a variable one, it's normally with captive nuts. And if you're using one of the round ones, we've got them at both ends. So the fixed length here for the IBM rack over there, these go through the holes at the back and you see the bolts in the front. So I've just spun them around so you can see both sides of them. Okay. In both circumstances, You've literally just got a um, cavity that the rails are going to go into. So I'm just going to try and make sure I've got this the right way, because that's always embarrassing. That way around. I'm just zooming on the end profile of that map. You see that you've got these hooks and you've got uh, a blade. So there's a flat part and there's a bladed part for it to go into. You zoom right in front, Matt, and go in there. So what we're looking for, on the front of the rack, yeah, you can see there on the rails, you've got a hooked part and a flat part. So you want basically the hooked part to go into the hook and the flat part to sit under the flat. So if we can get this the right way up, that looks like that way. It's quite a bit of weight, so you'll have to forgive me. Ugh, normally you'd use two people to line this up. You line up the hook to go over the hook. You see that okay, Matt? I believe so, yeah. Ah, fantastic, my friend. Do that both sides and it just slides in. Once it's in, put a screw in that side and a screw in that side, just to lock it in place. I mean, it shouldn't be going anywhere. These are quite heavy. So again, once it's in, you can service everything, be it the discs or the power assembly at the front or the nodes on the back, from front and back. You shouldn't need to take them out. The message you need to take away is if you're using an IBM rack, you can use fixed rails. They're easier to put in. If you think that you might not be using an IBM rack, then I will buy the variable rails so that it will work in an IBM rack or a non-IBM rack. Mr. Apple, I hope that was useful. See you next time. TTFN.